Have you ever dreamed of taking a vacation to the moon? What if I told you it is no longer just a dream? And by the end of this video, you will understand how lunar tourism could become real. Stay with me until the very last moment, because I promise you will be inspired and amazed. The moon has captivated humanity for millennia, and its pale surface has been the muse of poets, while also serving as a beacon for explorers. From ancient calendars to modern space missions, its presence has shaped our civilization. When humans first set foot on its dusty plains in 1969, that moment changed everything. Today we stand at the threshold of another lunar revolution because private companies and international space agencies are planning missions to send humans back to the moon. Imagine walking on the sea of tranquility, standing under a sky that lacks atmosphere while gazing at Earth suspended in black space. A new era of lunar tourism is dawning, and several companies have proposed lunar hotels orbiting the moon or even settling on its surface. Others are developing lunar rovers that tourists could drive across plains of regolith, making visits interactive and immersive. This vision reflects the reality of scientific progress, since we have sent probes orbiting and landing on the moon with pinpoint accuracy. NASA and S. Artemis missions aim to return humans to the Moon and then establish outposts by the late 2020s, signaling a new phase in lunar exploration. Lunar tourism involves more than thrill-seekers floating in low gravity. It requires addressing enormous technical and physiological challenges. Each tourist would undergo extensive training similar to astronaut candidates because they need to adapt to microgravity radiation exposure, and isolation. Health risks include muscle atrophy, bone density loss, and exposure to cosmic radiation. But these can be mitigated through exercise routines, specialized suits, and shielding technologies. Medical autonomy will be critical because immediate evacuation to Earth is impossible. The cost of reaching lunar orbit is currently tens of millions of dollars per kilogram and that barriers remains the greatest obstacle for lunar tourism. Reducing launch costs through reusable rockets is essential, and companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin are pioneering vehicle reuse to cut the price of access to space. Environmental considerations are also important because rocket exhaust and stage debris could contaminate lunar dust and Earth's atmosphere. Preserving the Moon's historical landing sites and protecting the dark sky for astronomers requires careful regulation. Clean propulsion systems and strict planetary protection protocols are under development, and international treaties like the Outer Space Treaty guide responsible lunar activity. Any lunar tourism program must comply with global frameworks and promote sustainability. Private companies are investing billions to build the infrastructure for lunar tourism and SpaceX's Starship is designed to carry people to orbit, to the Moon, and even beyond. Advances in propulsion technology like nuclear thermal or electric drive could slash travel times and safety improvements in radiation shielding, regenerative life support systems, and compact habitats could make stays on the Moon feasible. VR research and Earth-based simulations are already teaching us how humans experience low gravity because virtual reality training programs replicate reduced gravity using parabolic flights and underwater neutral buoyancy. Robotic precursors may construct landing pads and solar farms on suitable sites to reduce risk and cost for future human visitors. A lunar tourist experience could include low-gravity hikes across crater rims, driving a moon buggy on the plains of Mare Imbrium, watching Earth rise from the lunar horizon, and stargazing with no atmospheric interference. Tourists might even pitch tents in shaded regolith, photograph Earth from a vantage point unseen by any astronaut before them, conduct geology and astronomy experiments, or plant crops in shielded greenhouses.
This is not science fiction. Scientific studies show that lunar dust is abrasive and potentially toxic if inhaled, so airlock systems must prevent contamination of habitats and protect human lungs from harmful regolith. Water ice has been confirmed in permanently shadowed craters near the poles, providing resources for life support and rocket propellant, making in situ resource utilization a game changer for extended stays. Communication delays between Earth and Moon average only about 1.3 seconds one way, allowing real-time conversation without awkward lag. Gravity on the Moon is one-sixth that of Earth, meaning you would weigh far less and must adapt motion to prevent injury. Beds in lunar habitats would need restraints to prevent floating off during sleep and exercise equipment must counteract bone and muscle loss even during short tourist stays. Trips may range from a few hours on suborbital jaunts to a week-long surface visit, with lunar resorts featuring panoramic viewing domes and inflatable habitats ready for reuse. Tourists will need thorough briefings on radiation exposure risk, solar flare response protocols, and emergency evacuation procedures. Medical facilities such as telemedicine services and autonomous diagnostics will be essential. Training will include survival in the lunar vacuum and navigation across uneven terrain, and it will involve rules to preserve historical Apollo sites. Cost reductions are on the horizon because reusable boosters and shared rides will dilute per-person expense and insurance products for space tourism being designed to cover emergencies, delays or liability. Legal frameworks involving liability waivers, licensing and medical consent will govern tourists' rights and space law experts are drafting agreements to clarify property use and operations on the moon. International cooperation will determine flight paths, protective zones for scientific heritage and shared benefits. Space agencies collaborate with governments and private firms to coordinate missions from launch to safe return. Lunar tourism will spark new leisure industries like moon photography courses, luxury lunar dining with Earthrise views and art retreats under a star-filled lunar sky. The economic impact extends to aerospace manufacturers, suppliers, trainers and hospitality service providers and human demand for lunar souvenirs, medals or even moon dust tokens could create collectibles markets. Scientific research benefits too because long-term observations from a human-occupied lunar observatory could unlock insights in astronomy and Earth climate monitoring. Space weather monitoring on the Moon's surface offers early warning for solar storms that might affect Earth, and lunar environmental data improves our understanding of planetary formation and solar system history. Culturally, lunar tourism may democratize space because previously only trained astronauts visited space, and now wealthy tourists may join that frontier. Public engagement in space will deepen curiosity and force the demand for science education. And inclusion of diverse backgrounds in lunar missions can promote global cooperation and shared future narratives. Space tourism companies are discussing scholarships, ride sharing, and educational packages to broaden access. And every visitor's reflection in the lunar surface will echo human ambition for exploration. Your footprint on the moon will mark a new chapter in our species' story beyond Earth. And by the end of this century, lunar tourism will become a common reality. People could book trips years in advance, pay deposits, and share experiences from moonside resorts because the future is closer than we once believed. Scientific verification remains at the core because every technological breakthrough is rigorously tested in simulations and robotic trials before human exposure. High altitude chambers, vacuum facilities, radiation labs, and neutral buoyancy pools replicate lunar conditions on Earth to ensure safety protocols meet international standards for human spaceflight. With every successful mission, risk decreases while potential increases. Artemis missions test Orion crew modules, landers, and habitats, while commercial ventures build confidence in feasibility. Imagine a generation growing up with moon vacation stories, children hearing tales of low-gravity games, views of Earth from a dome, and peaceful nights under a star-filled sky. 
This vision is grounded in reality, because lunar landers already deliver robotic payloads, communication infrastructure is verified, and planned habitats undergo rigorous engineering validation. Tourism to the moon will not be cheap at first, but as access increases modgens will shrink, as technology matures rides will become more affordable, and as competition grows providers will offer more options. For now only trained professionals might visit, but in the coming decades tourists may join them for short stays or immersive lunar adventures. The moon is not merely a rock in the sky, it is becoming a destination and represents the next frontier for human recreation, research and reflection. We invite you to share your thoughts in the comments. Would you take a trip to the moon? What would you most look forward to? Subscribe to this channel for lunar tourism updates. Like this video if you want more space destination content. Share with fellow dreamers who look up at the night sky and imagine. The moon awaits humanity's next giant leap. And the future is closer than ever before. And you could be one of the visitors. Thank you for staying until the end because your curiosity helps propel our journey into the stars.